Let's go over how to simplify a component by using subcomponents. So subcomponents, which is a term I learned from Nathan Curtis, are a great way to simplify complex components. So instead of handing designers a fully formed component, you can give them all the parts they need to build their own fully formed component as they're designing. And this is a great way to turn a potentially over-engineered, hard-to-learn component into something that's both easier and more flexible. My favorite example is with the table. We can see here the table component is made up of a series of columns, which are available in the assets panel. And the intention is for designers to pull in individual columns and construct their own tables rather than configuring the fully built out table. So let's give this a quick try by columns here. I'm going to go into the assets panel. Right, drag in a column, the instance of the component over here. Create a few instances just by duplicating. And let's see, let's take a look. First thing I can do is configure some of those top level decisions here. So all these columns can have a different number of rows, 10 or 20, a different style, maybe line or zebra, show or exclude a header. They can also have different types. They can all be badge, for example. From the way, I make these all a little bit unique. First one, I'll make a checkbox. Last one, a more icon. See, so I'll have one being a profile and another being a status. Perfect. Now that we've done some configuring from the top level, we can have those nested instances. So we can go in and make some really detailed changes. Let's take this one row, for example. So I have this one column. First thing you can do is I can edit the header cell. Let's say I want it to be sorting. And then next, I can go through and edit the status badge nested inside of each one of these data cells. First one could be error. The second one, complete. Third one, success, for example. Now to make this a table, I can place all these columns into one auto layout frame by pressing Shift A and having zero pixels between the columns. Then I can figure some of the auto layout settings for the children. So all the different columns inside. I'll keep the two columns with just icons set to a fixed width. I'm going to say that maybe I want this first column to be a little bit wider than the rest. So I'll keep it at a fixed width as well. And then I'll make the rest of them fill a container. So you can see that it gives them really easy editing. We have a really straightforward and responsive table. And it's really quite flexible. We can, for example, move the columns around, make any updates to them over here. Let's see. And I can also edit the sizes whenever I need to. So some columns can be fixed and some can be a little more fluid and fill the given space in the container. So to make this process even faster, you can also provide a shortcut, which is to create a template of your table. Oops. Over to layers. We can see that this template inside of the name has little instructions to detach it. This is really just meant to be a starting point and not used as a full component. I'm going to go in and detach this instance. But I see that inside each one of the columns are still very much attached. And now I have the additional pagination in the bottom as well. That's just a nice little shortcut if you're going to have designers building tables quite a bit to have them be able to add in this empty template very quickly and easily, where it already has maybe a common number of columns, this pagination, and the auto layout settings already set for them. But they'll still have that flexibility of being able to change the column widths the column order, how many columns there are, things like that. Back up here. So as you can see, for more complex components like the table, taking a deconstructed approach and offering subcomponents to your designers 
can make something overly complicated much easier, which will ultimately lead to better adoption by your team.